Hey everyone, welcome to Judging for the Win. I'm Dave, and this is my daily ruling. Today, I'm going to be trying something a little bit different. This video is the first in what I hope to turn into a short series of videos on the topic of what I do when I need to research a Magic the Gathering rules or policy question to discover the answer. Obviously, this is something that has great practical significance, but I understand that this is a little bit different from the type of content that I normally produce, so if you have strong feelings about whether you would or would not like to see another similar video in the future, definitely leave me a comment below. So I'm going to be starting from the very ground zero. Don't be intimidated if you have absolutely no experience with doing any of this kind of research. I'm going to be building everything up step by step in a sequence that anyone can follow. So the first thing that we're going to be talking about is what the policy and rules documents that you're going to be using to get this answer that you're looking for will be. We're going to talk about all of the different magic rules and policy documents and what they're for. We'll start with probably the most famous one, the comprehensive rules. If you've ever seen me make this gesture and have a rule come up, now you know what the CR stands for. The magic comprehensive rules is the full rules of Magic the Gathering. No analogies or simplifications here. Every rule in Magic spelled out in glorious technical detail. If you've got a question that sounds something like, what would happen if card A and card B interacted together? Well, the comprehensive rules is where you would look for an answer. But where would you look for the comprehensive rules? If you've ever tried to find the Magic comprehensive rules from the Wizards of the Coast homepage, you know that is a daunting proposition indeed. Fortunately, there is an easier way, and I'll show it to you right now. All you have to do is go to your favorite search engine and type in MTGCR and hit the enter button. This one here is the one that you're looking for. So we're just going to go ahead and click on this link. And you can tell that Wizards of the Coast really didn't want anybody to see these rules because you've got this text here that says, turn back now, it's your last chance. I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but that's kind of what it says to me. Now, fortunately for us, even if you're not a trained professional, you can still click on these links. So let's take a look at the PDF. And right here, we've got a couple of things that I wanted to point out to everybody. First of all, this rules is effective as of February 18, 2022. This is the reason why I do not suggest downloading the copy of this and saving it and using that every time, because these rules get updated on a fairly regular basis. At minimum, it's every three months when a new set comes out, but sometimes they have some half updates during when they have a Commander or a Modern Horizons type of a set getting released. So definitely be sure to download the rules every time. If you have a cell phone, then you probably don't want to do that because you'd be eating up your data cap. So if you have that sort of situation, I would definitely recommend getting an app. I won't recommend anything specific here, but I'm sure the people in the comments will be happy to help out. If you're familiar with the topic, it should be pretty straightforward to guide someone to getting an app that has the core functionality they need without too many bugs. That being said, on the computer, I definitely say downloading it every time is the way to go. The other thing that I wanted to point out is if you take a look at the table of contents, this is your best friend. This will give you a little bit of an overview of the general layout. We'll be going into a lot more detail in future videos about exactly how to navigate your way through the comprehensive rules so it's not going to be so scary. But suffice to say, familiarizing yourself with the table of contents is a great place to start. All right, so maybe we don't have a question that's about the Magic the Gathering rules. Maybe we've got something that's a little bit different, like the tournament rules. So to see what the difference is, let's remember that if you're playing Magic in a tournament scenario, any kind of tournament scenario, even an FNM, there's going to be some specific rules that are related to that. For example, pretty much every tournament is going to have a time limit for the amount of time that a round will take. But how long exactly would that time limit be? And what would the procedure be if you had a match that went to that time limit? Those types of questions don't have anything to do with interactions between cards. They have to do with tournament procedures. And the magic rules and policy document that we're going to need for questions like that is going to be the MTR, which stands for Magic Tournament Rules. Just like before, we're going to go to a search engine and type in MTG MTR, and let's see what we get. So we've got to be a little bit careful because it's not going to be the top result this time. It's actually going to be this one here. And so this one is going to take us to a page where we can download the Magic Tournament rules. We're going to, of course, X out of this pop-up here and then go ahead and download. And here we have the Magic Tournament rules, effective March 7, 2022. 
Always make sure you check the date before you go in to take some reads because sometimes it's been known to happen that you get an old version linked at the top even though a newer version is available. It's kind of annoying when stuff like that happens, but that's why you want to check the date every time. And so again, we have the same sort of schema that we had with the Magic the Gathering comprehensive rules. That being a table of contents that introduces all the different stuff that we're going to be able to take a look at. So you can take a look through here. This is really nice because it's actually a hyperlinked version. So you can click on something like the appendix and you can see what changed in the previous version. And of course, this is where all the specific cards that are banned in formats are. And that's what we had in the most recent update. That's why it's so soon. So we can see there were two cards that were banned in the March 7th update. The previous update was from February 24th and we had some other stuff added in here. Very nice. So the CR and the MTR are both devoted to what the rules of the game and the tournament are going to be. However, they don't say anything at all about a very important question that comes up all the time in Magic the Gathering tournaments. That being, what would you do if someone did something that was against the rules? And in order to answer this question, there's actually two different policy documents that we're going to need to take a look at. That's because there's two different rules enforcement levels and they both have different procedures. I made a whole video a while ago where I talked about the exact difference between regular and competitive rules enforcement level. So if you're not familiar with those terms, I would definitely recommend you check that out. However, if you are, then we're ready to take a look at the Magic IPG. Again, we're going to go to our favorite search engine. And again, we can't take a look at this top one because that's not going to be where it is. It's actually the second one down. Magic IPG stands for Infraction Procedure Guide, and it tells you what you would do if someone does something that's against the rules. We've got a little bit of an introductory blurb here, and we've got the same sort of situation with the table of contents, and this one unfortunately does not look like it's hyperlinked. I'm not sure why one of them would be and the other one wouldn't. Maybe it's just because my browser is a little bit slow, but who knows what the answer really is. Fortunately, in this one, there isn't as many sections, so you can fit the whole table of contents on one page, and at a mere 31 pages, it's not nearly as bad to scroll all the way through. And now we're ready for the fourth and final type of Magic the Gathering rules and policy document that I'm going to be covering in today's episode, that being the Magic the Gathering jar. And this document is going to be for judging at regular rules enforcement level. Unfortunately, there have been a couple of jars throughout Magic's history, but we can still see right up on the front here is where we're going to go to download. So, judging at regular rel, we're going to take a look at this document here. And this one is the shortest one of all, only one page front and back. And it tells you everything that you would need to know about what you would have to do to correct any sorts of problems that might happen from a player breaking the rules at a regular rules enforcement level tournament. The reason why this one is so much shorter than all the others is because, well, regular rules enforcement is a lot less standardized and therefore a lot less detail is required in order to describe what the fixes are. In fact, a lot of the time, the fix is generally described in a more philosophical way rather than a strict procedure that you would have to follow in order to correct the situation and bring it back to what it should be. So with the Magic IPG, You've got lots of different types of stuff. It's got to be well organized and categorized based on what type of infraction it is. In fact, what type of infraction you see someone commit at a competitive rules enforcement level tournament, well, that's going to have a big impact on what type of penalty and what type of fix they're going to have. Whereas in the judging at regular document, you don't really have that sort of formalism. It's not really needed and so therefore it's not there. You should also know that in addition to these documents, there's also a digital IPG and a digital MTR that cover the types of situations that might come up in an online Magic the Gathering tournament. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about those here because those documents are a little bit more specialized and a little bit less general interest, but you can find them the exact same way. So now that we've talked about all these documents, let's go through a brief summary and talk about exactly what we've learned so far. There are four different Magic the Gathering rules and policy documents that you might need to be able to access in order to answer a Magic rules or policy question. We have the Magic Comprehensive Rules, which tells you how all the cards interact with each other. If there's a question you have about how two cards are going to work if they're both in play at the same time, this is where the answer would be. Then we have the Magic Tournament Rules, 
which covers all the different tournament rules and procedures that are associated with playing Magic in a real-life face-to-face type of environment. After that, we've got two documents that talk about what would happen if someone breaks the rules and what sort of penalties and fixes we would need in order to apply to get the game state back to what it's supposed to be. We have the Magic IPG, which spells out these procedures for if we're judging at a competitive rel environment, and then we have the Magic Judging at Regular document, which is for, again, judging at regular rel events. All of these Magic rules and policy documents are going to form the basis of your research, and if you're looking for an answer, it's probably going to come from one of these four documents. So that is the Magic rules and policy documents, what they're for, and where you can find them. And that's all I have for you today. Join me again next time for another daily ruling. But until then, I hope you have a great day.